political comeback in the famous Munich Beer Hall where he launched the Putsch, reaffirming his leadership of the Nazi party. The next day, an event occurs that will advance his cause. The very incarnation of the new German democracy, the first president of the Weimar Republic, Social Democrat Friedrich Ebert, dies from a badly treated case of appendicitis. The loss is felt throughout Germany. Germans must elect a new president, and the swastika makes its comeback during the political campaign. The ban on the Nazi party has recently been lifted, as it's no longer considered dangerous. In fact, Ludendorff, the candidate of the United Extreme Right Parties, obtains barely 1% of the vote. Ludendorff's failure is what Hitler secretly desires, as it disposes of his main rival, for whom he half-heartedly campaigned. Revealing his political instinct, he says, we gave him the finishing blow. The man the Germans elect is the other great war commander, Marshal von Hindenburg. In 1870, as a young officer, he was present at the proclamation of the Second German Empire in Versailles' Hall of Mirrors. He reassures the army and unites the conservatives, which worries the left and the rest of Europe. Hitler will lie in wait. The Nazi party succeeds in spreading its cancer throughout Germany, its membership reaching 170,000. Hitler transforms his stormtroopers into a veritable private army. They are younger and younger. But let there be no mistake, this paramilitary order is composed of brutal fanatics, killers. Their new uniform earns them the nickname the Brown Shirts. It imitates Mussolini's Black Shirts, who some years before marched so successfully on Rome. Another symbol borrowed from Mussolini is the Roman salute, the outstretched arm accompanied by a guttural cry. In Mussolini's case, it's Viva il Duce. With Hitler, it becomes Heil Hitler. Long live Hitler. The SA uniform is created by a select team of German designers. Among the manufacturers is Stuttgart designer Hugo Boss, who promotes it in his ad campaigns. Hugo Boss, a Nazi party member, will also produce the terrifying black uniforms of the SS, the Schutzstaffel, Hitler's new protection unit, as well as the Hitler Youth uniforms. This is all very costly. The money mainly comes from rank-and-file Nazi party members and from rich sympathizers, such as steel magnate Fritz Tyson, whose steel plants are ready to forge new guns. They also include Henry Ford, the world's largest car manufacturer. The anti-Semitic Henry Ford will strongly support the Nazis. Ford will be the first foreigner the Nazis decorate with the Order of the German Eagle. In 1927, Hitler chooses Nuremberg for the party rally. It is a Nazi bastion and a medieval city of historical significance, with a Wagnerian allure that brings out its connection to the Germanic warlords of the Dark Ages. Hitler calls Nuremberg his ideological capital. He also wants to highlight the party's submission to the Führer, its leader. This personality cult will be enhanced through the work of his personal photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann.
always at the center of events. A Nazi from the start, a virtuoso of the Laker. He is always close to his master. Hoffman takes a series of surprising photographs intended to show the great leader's personal side. To win over female voters, as far as the Nazis can grasp their preferences. In Hoffman's small Munich photography shop, Hitler, as always, inspired by Wagner and fascinated by opera singers' theatrical movements, studies a whole range of gestures conveying domination, which he will use in the first big Nazi rallies. Hitler states, the masses are feminine and stupid. Only emotion and hatred can keep them under control. Hatred. This is exactly what the SA is sowing throughout Germany, beginning with the Jewish neighborhoods in large cities. In what is still a peaceful society, Stefan Zweig is a witness to the birth of violence. He writes, it was the fascist method, but in the German style carried out with military precision. At the blow of a whistle, the SA would leap from their trucks with lightning speed, beat people up with their billy clubs, and at the sound of another whistle blow, they would jump back into their trucks and race away as fast as they had come. But the intimidation and terror produce sparse results. In Germany's 1928 legislative elections, the Nazis obtain only 2.6% of the ballot, less than one million votes. The communists receive three times as many, the Central Party four million and the right five million. The Social Democrats come out on top with 10 million votes. Yet in the Reichstag, Berlin's parliament, this 2.6% of ballots, mainly from rural areas, translates into 12 new Nazi deputies. They create quite an impact, as almost all are wearing SA uniforms, among them Hermann Goering, making his comeback. <laughs> <laughs> 